All right, guys. Welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. And uh, Cameron, you there? I'm here. All right. All right. We got Cameron, and he's got a couple little interesting things that have happened out in the old state of Delaware. Um, real quick, I want to let you guys know that I had mentioned this on the last encounter story, but uh, I've got the uh, shirt for next month's giveaway. And here's just a little kind of snapshot of uh, the cards that we'll be giving away. There's like three cards in each one. They're basically blank cards inside, so you can make birthday cards or baseball cards, whatever. But uh, this is from Robin Hyde. She's just an absolutely awesome uh, artist. So those will be <clears throat> the giveaway for um, August. And uh, right now, I know that uh, Cameron doesn't have a lot of time today, so let's get in here with Cameron. Cameron, welcome. Was big for, man. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Glad you're here. Glad you're following along. Uh, hope you enjoy the uh, encounter stories and other interviews and stuff. So <clears throat> it's kind of kind of fun here and unique. So yeah, I listen to almost every one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Everybody was like, "Do you ever listen to?" So it was like, "What do you think when you listen to yourself?" I was like, "I never listen to myself." <laughs> I don't. I don't. I will read <clears throat> before I listen to myself. So yeah, it's weird. I don't know why. But anyways, why don't you go ahead and share with us a little bit about um, a little bit about the couple experiences that you've had out there in uh, Delaware, and uh, we'll kind of lead in. I know that uh, Cameron wanted to chat today a little bit and talk a little bit about um, the different types of Bigfoot and what we think is possibly out there, so we can chat about that too. So go ahead, take us there. Yeah, um, I guess about a decade or so now, there was these uh, woods, me and my friends just always went around and romped around in the woods for a while and uh we would stay there well after dark a lot and there was just a couple of really weird times where we heard sounds that uh i spent some time in the woods and i don't really hear too many sounds that i would associate like sounding like a primate and there was this god awful hooping sound um it like it reverberated in your bones i don't know what made it but it was it was loud enough for uh, make us want to get out and uh it sort of sparked us we were all really interested in Sasquatch at the time because of that and we were just going there never really expecting to find much but mm -hmm. um we found a, a footprint it was about five miles into some like really thick dense woods and it was on the edge of this pond and it was just a big uh, like size 13 looking barefoot and like it, it probably was a person but it just it's like this placement was just really odd like you get cut up getting there in bare feet so that was a uh, that kind of like got me thinking like maybe there is something and uh we had rocks thrown at us which you know nothing really throws rocks that was that still kind of confuses me to this day like mm -hmm. where are you but, at when um, they were throw when whenever it was was throwing rocks um there's this main trail that uh leads into the woods it's like a gravel path that goes into these large large section of woods and we were like walking along the gravel path and just something was throwing the, the rocks at us from the path and like there was nobody out there we called out because there's hunters around there sometimes rarely we're just like making sure that we were safe and uh we just got more rocks thrown at us and nothing ever responded mm -hmm. it was uh pretty odd <sighs> Yeah, that uh, that whooping sound, that is, uh, you know, my mother one time uh, was up near Hyatt Lake here in Southern Oregon, and from a little about three or four miles back, there's this little place called Little Hyatt Lake. It's kind of like a glorified pond, really, <laughs> than it is a lake, and uh, she heard screams one night that she just couldn't account for what it was. It, it yeah. wasn't a person. But it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, mountain lion or anything like that because she's, we've heard that, you know, most of our lives. So uh, we live in Oregon. I mean, it's all, you know, <laughs> usually when people yeah, go out in the woods here, they're always worried about mountain lion. Not even bear, really, for the most part, unless it's a mama bear. Um, but I don't see Sarah Palin running around our woods all the time. So <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing about Delaware is we don't really have any uh, large predators, no bears. I mean, if mountain lion is around, it makes the news. So, like, there's really nothing out there that yeah. should be making those kinds of sounds. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and we, to, to make that kind of a sound, too, that kind of vibrates through you, I mean, that's kind of, that is, uh, that's pretty powerful. That comes from a set of lungs and a gut from somewhere, you know, and, you yeah. know, size 13 footprint it's really not as common as you might think so and and it could have been bigger 
<laughs> it may have been, but um, you know, yeah, we didn't really have measuring tools on us, and exactly. it was in some mud. We couldn't really take many photos that came yeah. out really well. Yeah, but having a human footprint like that, kind of out there, just random. Yeah, it just got me scratching my head. And there had been um, one other occasion. I mean, this isn't. I wouldn't really attribute it to Bigfoot, but I definitely saw something that looked like a primate and I've been scratching my head about it ever since trying to kind of weigh it over my mind, whether I'm like, am I going crazy? Did I really see that? We were um, driving down the highway and just like for a, a split second, I looked off to the right and there was a, a white hominid just over a, a bird. It looked like it was just, uh, I don't know, it looked like a very young kind of white chimpanzee and that it was like pretty much, I don't know, within 10 miles of where everything else had happened. And I saw that and I'm like, well, that's... What part I've of Delaware was like this that anyways? What, what, what part um, of Delaware? Newcastle County. Newcastle County. Okay. So right. it's, um, it's the northernmost part. It's the most built up, which is another reason why I was like, wow, there's probably nothing out here. But <laughs> it was uh, one of the larger, un, like basically unbuilt up section of woods we had mm -hmm. that... uh. You can actually, if you go on Google Earth, you can follow it. It's just straight trees all the way down to the southernmost county. There's like a few little road crossings, but from where we were, it's basically a big swath of woods that went down the whole state. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting, man. So it was just, do you, do you, can you, how could you tell that it was like kind of like a, a monkey looking like thing? Was it the face? Well, it was, face, uh, no, I saw it, it's back and it was uh, squatted down on its hind legs and it forearms were just kind of shuffling it was a split second they were like probing or tearing open i'm not really sure but it was hunched over this bird and i don't know it was it i saw it i thought chimpanzee but we don't have those so i was like all right wow and it was like white white wow. or kind of white gray or just uh more like a dirty snow white color uh, didn't really see the top of its skull. It, it was looking down, so I couldn't really see a, a conical head or any really determining features. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was just, it really caught me off guard because, you know, I don't really expect to see things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But how, how, how high off the ground was it? I mean, squatting wise? Uh, it was three feet max. It was very small. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's weird. It was just yeah. kind of just kind of hunkered there over a, a bird. Yeah. Just a dead bird it like of it some was, kind. Yeah, it looked like it was eating it, but there was no, like, gore or blood or anything, so it was mm -hmm. white, so I would have seen that. Mm. Huh. But that's what kind of <laughs> got me interested. Yeah, it's kind of got me interested in all the different, like, subspecies and all that. It was like, all right, I'm not sure what I saw. It was it seemed like an unknown primate to me, but it doesn't fit, like, standard Bigfoot stuff, so... <laughs> Well, uh, that really depends. I mean, you know, and that's where we can kind of get into your questions about you were asking about four different types. If there's, you know, how many different types are there? What what kind of types are there? Um, you know, it's me personally, just so you know, I believe right now there's really kind of two types. Um, you know, uh, my good friend William Jevning, uh, he actually wrote a couple fascinating, awesome books like uh, Notes from the Field and whatnot. Great book. Um, <sighs> You know, he believes there's basically about, you know, three or four types, four types for the most part. And I think he thinks that the Dogman one is a type of Bigfoot that has more of a protruding kind of almost snoutish kind of face, um, which could be, you know, uh, what people call Dogman could just be another type of Bigfoot. Personally, right now, I'm not kind of in on that myself. I don't know about you, but I believe in no. like, yeah, I kind of buy the the kind of two types, you know, I don't believe in multiple species because usually there's only one species of something. There's a species of dog. There's one species of human, uh, humans. Yeah, um, <laughs> everybody keeps asking me about races. I was like, what do you mean races? There's only one race. <laughs> so, you know, um, but there can be different types or, you know, basically different um, looking um uh, species within within a race of of something or whatever um so like you get different looking dogs you get different looking cats whatever um 
this right here, I kind of believe, and I kind of run with, there's a Patterson Gimlin type of Bigfoot out here, the Patty film. The type A. Yeah, and from my own experience from seeing tracks myself that were bigger than 13-inch shoes, they were inches more than that. And yeah. in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of, you know, probably two weeks before Christmas uh, in Oregon. Yeah, out in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> out in the cold. There's snow on the ground when we found those things. Um, but uh, uh, me, I kind of believe that there's the Patty one and then there's the Skunk Ape. And okay, I think, so you think the Skunk Apes go as far as like California? Because I know a lot of the reporting uh, reports you have is like type B's on the West Coast. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, like I said, the interviews here are more of the fact-based kind of, you know, interviews and stuff like that. Whereas the encounter stories that I get via email are like four or five paragraphs of experience. And I create the stories around them, kind of like Native American storytelling, just, you know, based on true stories. But this right here was me and you. This is more of the research, more of the real interviews of people who, you know, we can pretty much get in there and do some fact-finding. And uh, I do believe that, personally speaking, that to a certain point, um, it, it, Bigfoot kind of is two different species. You got the Patterson, you've got the Skunk Ape, you've got Northern Hemisphere, you've got Southern Hemisphere. You'll notice that in the human race as well, between skin color, hair type, even hair coverage on a body, whatever, is kind of dominated by their geographic location. Yeah. So I think that size, hair, um, you know, not hair color, but amount of hair, like the skunk apes we hear sometimes are very hairy, but the ones up north seem to be a whole lot hairier than the ones down the south. Down the south, it's like thinner hair. It's you know, here and there. Um, that's just what I yeah, hear. I remember you, yeah, I remember you describing one as uh, like Chewbacca looking, like really thin, long hair. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the ones I hear is just like basically a, a giant dreadlock almost. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I hear a lot of the time that they're like, you know, it was six foot tall, it was seven foot tall. Once in a while down there in the skunk apes, you hear of the nine, ten foot tall stuff. But for the most part, you ever notice during those encounters, you hear it's like, man, that thing was like six, seven foot tall, you know, um, usually right around seven foot tall. And up here in the Pacific Northwest or anywhere up north of, you know, I don't know, maybe there's an imaginary line. I don't know. Um, but uh, you notice up north, it's like, man, that thing was nine feet tall, was 10 feet tall, you know, and on average, it's over eight feet tall. So these are the things that I started picking apart over the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. <clears throat> and, you know, as I read more and more and more and got to know more of the researchers out here and, uh, um, you know, it's like Gimlin and them were like, you know, the thing was like eight and a half, you know, nine feet. Tommy, the thing was tall. It was huge. You know, uh, they did recreation stuff on it. It came out to about seven foot you know, seven ten or eight one, somewhere right around there, whatever it was, it's pretty tall. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so um, that's my idea. What's yours? I mean, you you come out, you you find four species, or do you find one um, or two? Well, I mean, in the contiguous U.S., I'd I'd maybe say three. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that the type Bs are skunk apes. Just um, a lot of the things. Mostly, I'm just going to reference things that uh, stories you've had are just you hear about the uh, the quadrupedal ones, or at least the ones that spend more time on all fours. And a lot of the skunk ape reports are pretty much exclusively bipedal, and that's kind of I don't know. That's led me to believe that there probably is a difference between the two of them. And that and uh, the teeth. I remember once you had said that the uh, the type B had the the sharp canines, whereas the Patterson Gimlin ones had the big flat blocky teeth. Yes, and there really isn't, um, you really don't know what skunk ape keys are like, but I don't know. I've just, I've noticed a few basic differences in just the behavioral reports of type Bs and skunk apes. Well, skunk apes usually are described as like pretty shy. They'll, they'll flee, whereas the type Bs yeah. are really more aggressive. They'll get in your face. And yeah. it might just be a, it might just be a geographic thing, but yeah, I'm not really sure. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a behavioral difference or something that has to do with it's it. Well, it's probably a behavioral difference. It's it's uh, for me. Why would they be more aggressive up north than they are down in the southern parts? Um, I don't know, really. I couldn't really tell you. I mean, um, <laughs> till we get one, you know, and learn more about it, yeah. and be able to watch them and, you know, from a distance, of course, what they do. Uh, I don't think we'll really know. Um, best hypothesis, though, good hypotheses, or there's a ton of them out here. And most of them kind of agree on certain things. The ones up north are a little bit more confrontational as far as being, um, because they're being more territorial, uh, more protective of their family units, possibly more protective of their hunting ground, um, their area. Um, whereas the skunk ape down south could be, Maybe it's because of the food. Maybe the food is just a little bit more abundant down south, whereas, you know, they can eat things like palm fronds and stuff like that, whereas the Bigfoot up here is scrounging around for berries and pine nuts and <laughs> and deer and turkey and everything else, while it's still a ton of food and stuff up here, you know, fish in streams and whatnot. Um, it's easier to come by in the southern parts of the hemisphere because of jungle kind of like you know uh jungle like yeah, kind swamp. of uh, yeah swamps basically it's everywhere so whereas here it's like you can go through miles of pretty much empty space and then all of a sudden run into a hundred square miles of rainforest you know so a little bit different here maybe maybe that's why it's more protective so. Yeah, it could easily be. Yeah. But um, what do you, what's your take on all the DNA evidence that's been found over the years and the work Melba Ketchum has been doing and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I like Melba uh, Ketchum. I like um, I like most of those guys. Uh, I you know I might not agree with them as far as you know evolution versus creationism, but we're all pretty much agree on certain things, uh, which is. Um, personally speaking, I've discussed it with um, William Jevening, who has um, the insight on a police officer who actually gave evidence from um, someone, <clears throat> from a young guy, young kid, who actually got some blood on something from it, and uh, they decided to have it, the DNA checked, and the DNA did show up unknown primate. Um, yeah. He has that as a Wait. factual thing, so you know, he's proved that up. So that's, that's very interesting. <laughs> that's really yeah, awesome. And there, there's been a few, um, Josh Gates and the destination truth team found, uh, pairs that came back as an unknown primate in the Himalayas. Yes. I just didn't know if anybody had ever cross referenced those different samples. Cause I've last I checked, there was like four or five different confirmed unknown primate samples. Yeah. Found. Had they cross checked them with each other and whatnot. Yeah. I, I don't know. I I don't know. I'm like you. I'm kind of lost on that one. I don't really know. Yeah. You know, and, and are they going to do it? I mean, you got to get the scientists out there to really do that anyways. And first and foremost, there's a lot of them who are just, they just don't feel like, wait, they think they're wasting their time. Yeah. On stuff but like I mean, that. unless, you know, the scientists from Jurassic Park are out there making fake DNA, like, there's <laughs> something there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if you've got four of these little discoveries going on, I don't see why they shouldn't just, you know, or the people who found them, you know, what I would do is you get hold of the people that found these and then have them in exchange the information of who did, you know, the checking, the DNA and everything and resend it out there to the different people this time. Yeah. And that's how you can get it cross checked real fast. So you can have, you know, all three scientists or four scientists saying, oh, you know what? This is an unknown primate. And then another hair sample, this is an unknown primate. And then you kind of mark the spot of where you found it. This is where I found yeah. this hair sample. That's a great way to go out and do it. I don't know why anybody's thought of that or haven't, hasn't done it yet. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good stuff there. Yeah, so. I mean, people are skeptical even if there's, pretty concrete proof so yeah I know, I you think, know i think it's gonna take a body it, it, 
you know, unfortunately, I'm with you. It's going to take a body for the world, for everybody to know. Because, I mean, that's just a fact. Because once you have a body, you have a body. It's just, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I was telling everybody the other day with these little things like recorders. People don't understand, but it's pretty hard to fake some sort of scream <laughs> or whooping. Yeah. Um, it's pretty hard to fake that kind of stuff to get it to be it's kind of like the um you know talking to ron moorhead uh, a little over a week and a half ago almost two weeks ago i got to actually talk to ron one morning we were just sitting by the campfire just kind of chatting and and you just know and you could just tell by the way he was sharing everything with somebody who was new to him i've never met him before and i was just like you know i've heard those things a million times i go to sleep with them in my ears sometimes I was like, what was it like? That's all I wanted to know. What was it like to start hearing that? And he's just like, it was the most amazing thing. It, it was it was frightening and awesome and, you know, just exciting all at the same time. The way he said it, he just got this kind of misty, awesome, like I'm looking back in time kind of face, <laughs> you know, expression. And he was just, that's just you just knew that what he was saying, he was talking from a real experience that he had. And so, you know, it's like yeah, you with the whoop. I, yeah. It like profoundly just affected me at the time. Like, you know, I was rooted to the spot and just the way it just reverberated through my body. Like I could, I don't know. I got this mental image of whatever was making it, you know, like the lips curling on the who sound, like, Mm -hmm. You could hear it very clearly, and you know, we're designed to be able to hear other human voices. And if somebody's just out there messing around, you'd be like, "Oh, that's just some guy making a whooping sound," but this was not a human noise. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it's it's so hard to fake. Yeah, yeah, that is. Uh, I'm actually putting your name on here. There you go. There we go. So yeah, I mean, that's just. Uh, you know, my mom said that the screams were really weird because they they sounded like an animal, but towards the tail end of them, it sounded very human uh, or or weird like that. It was just it was close to human, animal, whatever. Um, it just had this weirdness to it. She said it was just off the wall, uncanny. It just weird, and it was frightening yeah. for her. Because my, my dad would work graveyard, and it was just, we'd live up this campsite during the summer because it was just cheaper. we come from a very little rich town, and it's expensive to live in. And we'd go up there and live during the summer, and my dad would work graveyard at mills, save up money, pay rent, you know, through the winter with it and fall and whatnot. And then we'd go back right back up in the mountains in the summer. Um, but, uh, you know, she heard that, and it was it was really unsettling to her. So... But your white monkey thing on the side of the road, that that one. Yeah, um, I'm still <sighs> perplexed about that. I still really, I'm on the fence myself because it was, it was a split second. You know, we were highway driving. I was, happened to be in the passenger seat just scanning the trees and just drove by and saw it. I've been processing it ever since. Yeah, I mean, that split second was, you know, 1,001, 1,002 gone. Yeah, exactly. that's a that's a lot of time. Even two, you know, even you know, two to three seconds of just seeing something real quick is enough time to tell that this is something that this is out of the ordinary. This is something I've never seen before. You yeah, know, nothing, it, nothing yeah. has shoulders like that out there. Like nothing. No. So, Could you see like like the back or anything like that? Yeah, just just basically the back. I really didn't see legs or anything because it was squatting but i saw just its back and it was just it looked like a, a humanoid back it had shoulder blades a spine that led down to two lower legs um I, the shoulders were pretty broad but not like obnoxious football pads like they were just pretty pretty thickly built like patterson gimlin bigfoot film kind of thing it looks pretty hardy yeah yeah well, you know, a young and a young one. Um, it's kind of like us growing older. Our faces do, you know, our skulls and our faces change a little bit over time, you know, as we grow. So maybe they look a little bit more 
chimpanzee-ish or monkey-ish until they grow older and things become more defined and refined over time. Yeah, there's this, uh, there's this great piece of footage I saw. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a host or not. You can never trust anything these days, but it was uh, <laughs> apparently it's a juvenile in a tree. Uh -huh. And uh, it was not the best clear shot ever, but it definitely looked like a chimpanzee was sitting in a tree, but I forget. I think they were in New York State or something. It was like, well, no chimps up there. What the hell is that thing? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Um, and it was just a bird, huh? It was just eating a bird. Yeah. It, uh, I couldn't really tell what kind of bird, but it was like a larger kind of bird. <laughs> Not huh. an uh, avian expert, but probably know, some like, sort of roadkill or turkey vulture or yeah, something. Some. Huh, I wonder if on it's... The, highway, the roadkill thing would make sense. Yeah, it could have been roadkill, or it could have been eating roadkill itself, and that thing popped out and snapped its neck. Yeah. Um, I do know that vultures can pretty much vomit up to about 10 or 12 feet accurately. That's their defense, one of their defense mechanisms. I did not know that. Yes. I, I worked at Wildlife Images for a while, and I learned a lot about bears and vultures and cougars and whatnot. <laughs> they actually can, they, they'll, go, they'll just upchuck, like, Bleh. and you got to remember that most of this, I mean, they're basically, you know, creation's cleanup crew. So they're really just eating a lot of dead stuff out there. And yeah. it's, it's worse than being sprayed by a skunk. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that can gag you and knock you out. It's so nasty. Oh yeah, so <laughs> vomit and rotten flesh. Yeah, not yep. a good combo. No, <laughs> but that, that's what they told us. They're like, dude, don't don't get too close to those things. I was like, why not? It's like they can vomit up to like ten or twelve feet, pretty darn accurately. And I was like, what's wrong with that? And it's all he's eating rotten chicken we're feeding it. And I was like, ah. Oh. Plus, you get that stuff in your mouth. You get salmonella. You get poison. You could die. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the next time you're around vultures, stand clear. <laughs> yeah, I remember so, that. Wow. Yeah, or white monkeys bent over them. Um, that's another good thing. Yeah, that sounds like a kind of a young one to me. It really, really does. It sounds like a young yeah, one to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm 6'3", and I don't think it would have even made it up to my hips standing up. <sighs> so I must have been a real young one. I wonder if there there had to be an adult nearby. Yeah, you know. didn't see anything, but. You know, William uh, and some others I've heard say that when they're younger, the different hair colors don't darken or get, you know, they can change colors over time as they grow older. I mean, I didn't. Yeah. I was born a redhead. I've been copperheaded ever since, so. But, yeah, I was born blonde, but. Well, I guess now, now so. it's turning white. <laughs> 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 Getting old now, man. Um, but, uh, with that one, I mean, it, you know, it, it, seeing how it was kind of a dusty kind of white, it could have just been dirty or maybe it was old enough. It's sort of changing, it could have been changing color as well. I do believe that's totally possible because I've seen, and uh, I've, uh, I mean, I've talked to people that talk about, you know, like, uh, the one encounter story that I just did recently, um, when they described, when you described the, uh, the streak down its back, that was in the, the, the uh, uh, encounter that he talked about um, and it being kind of grayish, like white grayish, you know, streaks down the back um, and kind of leading up. And so he was, you know, it just looked old. And I was thinking that was an older one. Um, you know, that's something I want to talk about tomorrow, Sorry. Friday, is talk a little bit about um, – um, basically the end life part of big of a bigfoot what do they do where do they go why can't we find these bodies anywhere i mean you know. we don't really find many bears either i hear that argument thrown out all the time i found one a whole oh, yeah? dead skeleton of a bear and that's why i wanted to talk about it and it was just off the side of a dirt road and i'll be sharing that tomorrow i'll record every, everything that i talk about tomorrow but um in the morning um but i'll kind of share with you guys exactly where I was and how I found it. It was amazing. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I was like, no way. It was just right off the side of the road. Well, that's crazy. He just Did crawled up hit? and died. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. But I'll be talking a little bit about that tomorrow. But uh, that's awesome. I know you're here on your lunch break. How much time you got left there, man? 
I'm actually about to clock back in. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just kind of wrap up here then real quick, but yeah, man, that's, that's pretty cool. Even out in Delaware, you know, it's like I said, I, lo I love doing the interviews from, you know, around the country and everything from people that have experiences or just in general want to chat about the subject. Um, you, we've been able to do both here, which has been pretty awesome. Um, you know, me, myself, Cameron, I, I think there's two kinds right now, personally. That's what I, I come from. Skunk ape, patty. <laughs> it's like, you got, you got yeah. decent size and you got extremely large and pissy. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I believe there. Um, but find, you know, three or, or, or four other types. I, I'm not beyond it. And, uh, you know, I'm not beyond the dog man being a form of maybe a third type or something like that i'm not beyond that so just so you dog, dog man, man out there just, yeah i think a dog man's just type b the the bipedal or i'm sorry the quadruped the bad tempered one yeah that kind of walks around mostly on all fours for the most part i've heard about that one i've heard william talk about that one and some other people talk about that the snoot it has more of a snoutish kind of a face instead of a human chimpish kind of thing um, so if, if there's a dog man out there, I'm kind of, I, I would, I'd buy that. I'd buy that. I'd follow up on that. Yeah. So interesting. Cool. It was nice talking to you, man. Uh, yeah, it was really an interview. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If you guys have any questions for us or Cameron or anything like that with the, uh, the white monkey or uh, the footprints or the stones or anything, hit it up in the comments. He'll check out the comments here and there, I'm sure, and, and answer people as he can whenever he's not busy. Um, but other than that, thanks, Cameron. Go ahead and uh, stay on here for just one second uh, real quick. Um, thank you guys very much yeah. for being here on PacWest Bigfoot. Don't forget, you can go to PacWestBigfoot.com, PacWestBigfoot.com. You guys can subscribe, get in on there on the free giveaways. And this month, going to give away some of these three of these RD cards. They're cool. And a nice T-shirt from the Southern California Sasquatch organization. So going to do that for you too, all right? With that, guys, God bless, and I will see you on the next Encounter Story.